Hey everyone, welcome to Lights Out Live, sponsored by Hancock Gateway Health. We are here tonight talking about a topic that can be very sensitive, um, and we just really want to address it, but then also bring in your conversation, your real life experiences. Um, and we'll keep it a little bit light, but we definitely want to give you the information that you need to talk to your kids about bullying. So we'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Mann with Indie with Kids and you are watching Lights Out Live. Today we have a very special guest. I am joined with uh, Kate Rollicky, who is the prevention and, let's see, I said it wrong. What is your, your title? It's a long one, Early Intervention and Prevention Director. Okay, for Marion County Commission on Youth. And uh, we had a long-standing partnership with McCoy, as they're known uh, in our <laughs> in our office, um, where we address a lot of like sensitive issues and uh, topics that are important to families. And uh, tonight we are taking a little uh, steer from what we typically do, and we're going to kind of just bring it into real life. And we want to interact with you guys. We want to know what are your experiences with bullying, either as a parent or as a child yourself. Uh, we want to hear what it's like for you um, and your children. Uh, but we also have Kate here to kind of help us come up with ways to talk about these things with our kids, um, maybe to help us define like what is a bully and what is it not? Because I know um, at least in our family, I feel like the word is overused a lot. Um, sometimes it's used very accurately, but sometimes it's just kind of a placeholder for not being able to describe what's going on in, in your social circle. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so we're going to go over to the comments right now. And you guys, um, if you're watching tonight, we want you to comment as always. We love having your comments. We love having you as a part of it. And we are giving away some very special prizes and we will randomly pick people who are commenting. So the more you comment, the more likely are, you are to be randomly picked. We've got Amanda on here right now. She's a top fan. Um, and uh, today we are giving away a family, well, several family four packs of passes to our Aladdin Cave of Wonders event on Sunday at Climb Time Indy. So uh, we will be randomly picking some of you guys from the comments to join us there on Sunday. It's going to be a blast. But if you don't win tickets tonight, don't worry. You can still purchase those. Uh, it's $10 per climber, so not even per person. Uh, and you can join us on Sunday. We'll leave a link for you. Um, but we do want to give a bunch of those away tonight. So let's talk about bullying. First, tell us how come you're an expert at bullying? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound like I was I a know. bully Are at you one a point. Bully? <laughs> I am not a bully. Um, yeah, so I have, a, I have a degree in public health, and I've been working in violence prevention for about five years now. Um, and a lot of different forms of violence um, really kind of have the, the same root causes. And so getting to understand those root causes and understanding that nobody is born violent, nobody is born a bully, bullies are made. Um, people who act out in violence, they're, they're made. Um, having that understanding, I think, kind of speaks, I guess, to the expertise that, that you brought up. Yeah, yeah. Did definitely did not want to imply that you were a bully, but <laughs> <laughs> but Fine. yeah. So um the other thing that I want to talk about and I want to hear from you guys in the comments, how would you define a bully? Like what as a parent, um when you are considering that your child is being bullied or noticing that maybe your child is not getting along with another child, how do you define bullying? Um, the reason why this is sensitive to me um, is I have four very strong personality children. I don't know where they get it. Uh, but they, um, one situation in particular a year ago, um, a parent actually went onto the classroom messaging system and called my child a bully um, to all the parents in this messaging system uh, because her daughter and my daughter had had a small issue on a school bus. And it wasn't even, like there was no meanness or like they're actually friends. They had actually just exchanged numbers that day to have a play date. Mm -hmm. and, but my daughter had been kind of messing around with her on the school bus on the field trip and had ripped her dress. 
And um, so that parent was very upset that her dress was ripped and went on and said that my daughter had bullied her daughter and um, that the bullying needed to stop and used that word probably five or six times before finally ultimately this conversation was shut down. Um, but And I came upon it after I actually never even saw the conversation other than the screenshots that were sent to me by other parents. But um, it was just like so disheartening to hear someone a, call my daughter a bully and then B, later understand what it was and think, well, that that doesn't seem like bullying. So I don't know. So tell me about bullying. Is that bullying? <laughs> yeah. So it's really interesting. I think we all have this perception in our mind of what bullying is. And it's either from our own personal experiences. I know I was bullied growing up in elementary school. Um, and or it comes from the media from what we're told bullies are we can all probably reach back into our favorite 80s or 90s high school sitcom mm -hmm. boy meets world and we can probably recognize right off the bat three or four episodes that had to do with bullying and and you know we kind of have this image in our mind of the bigger kid picking on the smaller kid mm -hmm. and stealing his lunch money um but anymore bullying is a lot more nuanced um and while you were telling that story i was almost thinking like wow it sounds like that parent was bullying you almost uh, <laughs> amen me. amen it yes yes i that's where i kind of yeah yeah so <laughs> i i think the biggest thing to keep in mind about about bullying and and differentiating it from um challenging social situations or disagreements which are a healthy part of any friendship mm -hmm. or relationship is that when it comes to bullying, there's a distinct power imbalance where one person is using power over mm -hmm. another person. And that could be to cause harm, physical harm, emotional harm. It could be to um, harm their possessions, to harm their body. Um, it could be to embarrass them or humiliate them. It could be to damage their reputation or to keep other kids from being friends with them. And then um, something that falls into the legal definition that I think often um, parents have to reconcile with when it comes to schools and what schools are able to do is that often there's this um, aspect of it being repeated or the potential to be repeated. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a singular event, um, a school sometimes can't always take the kind of action that we might want them to take because legally it doesn't fall under that bullying definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so hard. I know um, because this is a sensitive topic and you guys are all like, I don't necessarily know who's watching this. If you have a story about being bullied, either yourself or your child that you want to share with us, um, then just send me a, a private message right now on the Indie with Kids page and just say, please don't say my name if you want to share your story. And we'd love to you know, get some input from you. Um, so we have uh, one here. Um, this is from Elizabeth. Uh, she it's, it's in the public comments. So she says, hi, all a mental health anti bullying advocate here. My experiences being bullied have shaped my life's trajectory. I was bullied relentlessly for years during the end of elementary through freshman year until I went and homeschooled myself on the bus at school hallways. Thank God it was right before cyberbullying. That brings up a really, I know that's like, that's kind of the buzzword that I hear a lot for like the older kids. Like my children are younger now, they're in elementary school. They don't actually have access to devices in, unless it's actually in the school environment. Um, but the cyberbullying, just that, that element into play and just the things that can privately happen on cell phones and the group. I mean, it's like a digital gang. I mean, that, that's, that's how I see it. Is that the wrong word to use there? I don't know. I don't know if it's the right or wrong word to use, but, you know, parents do have a lot to navigate anymore. It's almost like bullying is evolving as quickly as technology is, that as soon as we get our um, minds wrapped around one app or one form of cyberbullying, all of a sudden there's a new app where new messaging or, or new things can take place. Um, and so usually what, what I would um, really encourage parents to do is... A, be mindful of how you're starting your child's digital footprint on the internet um, and think really strategically about do you really want to post that picture of your baby in the mm -hmm. bathtub um, because that's going to live forever on the internet for them. Kids now, 
their lives start on the internet very true before they even had the opportunity to consent to the information being put out there about them and then the second thing that I would say is that there are a lot of really great online resources, ironically, um, <laughs> that help review apps and not only apps, but media, music, movies, TV shows, um, but can re be really helpful in kind of monitoring what's out there, what do you need to know, how do you need to set up the parental control so that your kids can use some of these great technological advances, um, but not be damaged by them or cause damage with them? I think that um, in my experience, uh, I've, I've, in my experience, this is not making a scientific general statement. It's just, um, I feel like a lot of times the bullying maybe starts at home. And so I almost feel like those are the kids who probably need the most monitoring and are getting the least amount of monitoring in my experience. Um, and so, like you said, cause damage or be damaged by. And, but I, I really liked what you said about not, I mean, we just talked about this on our show last week about how um, parents are announcing the birth of their children on the internet. And like you said, there, there's not that consent. Um, I was, my daughter, um, it's funny, it's like the same kid I have all the stories for in this topic. <laughs> uh, she came in tonight and she says, can you show me pictures of when I was a baby? And you know where I went? Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's like my digital photo album. And so it, we we actually have a Facebook page for each of our children that's private, locked down. But we have access to it, and it's kind of like their baby book. And so I went on there, and we were scrolling through, and I was sharing uh, where we had written little stories about things she had said or things she had done. And they were laughing and having a good time. Um, and there was only one story where she went, oh, mom, like the rest of it, she laughed and it was like, okay, good. This was okay. And so, um, it wasn't even like the story I shared, I didn't feel anything about, but maybe it was a specific behavior or a mm -hmm. topic that she didn't feel comfortable with me sharing. So that kind of gave me a little bit of framework for what I do in the future, I guess. Um, but you're right, like those pictures are out there and obviously our family is very visible on social media. Our children are very visible. Um, but w luckily we have a lot of control over what we put out there. And I think everybody has that control. Well, and I think you gave a great example of how, you know, technology is neither good nor bad. It's how we use it. Right. And, you know, for a lot of folks, um, you know, those private Facebook pages, or I've heard of parents setting up a new Gmail account where they send all the pictures or they write down memories or they send videos. And as long as it's protected and it's private and mm -hmm. in a solid way, it can be a great tool for keeping those memories, those precious memories that we have. Um, and if we think about, you know, our parents and, and the what they had available to them, you know, the stack of mm -hmm. four by six photographs mm -hmm. that maybe you can find them in the closet, in maybe you can't. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really kind of remarkable that kids anymore can have almost this chronological timeline of so many memories in a really organized way. Um, so there are ways to to do that and and still protect their privacy and their um, autonomy. And I think even as parents, we're evolving and understanding the privacy and autonomy of our children and, and what they're going to need um, from us as far as that respect. I mean, you go into any parent board and there's parents posting pictures of this, their kid's butt on the diaper rash <laughs> or um, the the stories about, you know, like, I mean, I did share a bus story today mm -hmm. and that's a very sensitive topic uh, for my children. Um, but I would hope that it would be learning and I don't think that it painted my child <laughs> in a bad light here. Um, but I just feel, um, I don't know. I just feel like we're, we have to learn that and we're all going to mess up and we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace in that and learn from our mistakes the same way children need to learn from the mistakes of their behavior. My daughter made a very, my other daughter made a very insensitive comment to a classmate the other day. She came home, came straight to me, said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said this. And then when she told me what she said, I was like, oh my God. And she's like, you know, I just, I know, I know, I know. And she beat herself up over it. And I think that having children who are sensitive to those feelings and those filters, like recognizing like, oh, that's a filter that I need to know. That's the line. I shouldn't have gone there. Um, and now I'm going to learn from that. I think that that's like teaching them that is so important. Well, and I think that highlights something that parents can do 
early on either to identify those learning moments and those teachable moments with their kids, but also to be able to identify if your child is being bullied is to have that really open relationship, that really trusting relationship. And, and that can start with something as simple as asking every single day, how was your school day? Mm -hmm. Remembering the names of their friends, asking for details about class or about the interactions that happened or about the extracurricular activities. It's, it's really funny. My, um, I have a younger sister and, and we're both complete opposites. Um, that when I would come home from school, my parents would ask, how was school? And it would be like, a they joke, it was a like a nonstop ticker tape of every single detail that happened throughout the day. Right. And my sister's extremely introverted. So when I m moved out to go to college and she was home by herself, they would say, how was school today? And she'd say, fine. Yeah. yeah. And And so it's like... I don't I don't know if anything was going on. I don't think anything was going on. She was just a very quiet kid. But in those situations, if something is going on, would we have known it? Right. And so um, really trying to find those opportunities to dig a little deeper or to just let your child know, I'm always here to, for you to talk to. And if they do disclose something, validate it and believe them because their feelings, whether it was a big thing or a small thing that happened are very valid, no matter how old they are. Yeah. I think, and keeping, uh, my mom was visiting from California, uh, this past week. And when this situation happened with my daughter and she came in to talk to me and I told my mom later, I said, Oh, here's what happened. Cause of course, like her whole house was just upset <laughs> over this. And, um, my mom was like, Oh gosh. And I said, you know, but I feel really good that she felt comfortable coming to me, that those lines of communication are open. And that like, of course I, you know, responded with shock, but then talked to her about, hey, this is this is why you feel this way, because mm -hmm. it was wrong. And this is what's gonna prevent you from doing that again in the future. Um, and then, you know, but you're right, like, you have to account for personalities as well. Like mm -hmm. my other daughter may not be like that, but it doesn't mean something's wrong. It just means that, so you have to kind of understand who they are and what their emotional <laughs> situation yeah. is. So uh, we are live from Edge Studios in downtown Indianapolis. This is uh, Edge Media Studios. We have been broadcasting here a few times this past summer and love it here. Thank you so much to Edge Media for hosting us here. Thank you to uh, Gateway Hancock Health for sponsoring our show for the rest of the year. And thank you to Kate from McCoy, which is the Marion County Commission on Youth, for being here tonight to talk about bullying. Um, we This is our topic tonight. Um, I know sometimes you guys, it's like all fun stuff and everything, uh, but we thought this was like a, a good topic. We, we want to keep it sort of light, but also um, we know this is something you guys wanted to hear about. Um, and today is World Suicide Prevention Day, which is actually a really good opportunity to talk about this because as we know, sometimes these um, bullying situations can lead to uh, horrible traumatic situations for families and uh, children. So, so happy to have you all here tonight. Um, and we want you to participate in the conversation. We've got it going on in the comments. We're reading your comments. Um, and, and sharing them. And the more you comment, the more opportunities you have to win a family four pack to the Aladdin Cave of Wonders play day at Climb Time Indie this weekend. We'll be giving those away randomly to people who comment. We have a whole bunch of those to give away tonight. Uh, but wanted to tell you, let's see, let's see what some other people are saying in here uh, today. Lots of people talking about communication and responsive type communities, schools and communities, so we can catch the situations and keep reminding ourselves to be better. Erin um, says she's glad she's here tonight. Amanda is full of, like, she's learning so much. Um, Mrs. Clark is back. It's the anniversary for Mrs. Clark as a three-year follower. Uh, second week of school for our little one, and I was already calling the principal about something another kindergartner said to her. The disturbing thing is that I'm afraid an adult or parent has said those words to that child. Um, and Yeah, I mean, and that's what I was saying is sometimes I feel like it starts at home, just the things that I've read about bullying. Um, I, like I mentioned before, I have very strong personality children, and they are, um, there's a B word people like to use, bossy. 
Uh, <laughs> no weekend words here, you guys. Uh, bossy is kind of the word I hear other parents telling me about my children on the playground. And really, they're just trying to include people. And I think that's the hard part is that people are very turned off by that when really they're just organizers. They want to organize everything and include everybody. And for a long time, when parents would come up to me, and they'd be very angry. Like it's People are so confrontational, um, and they're, they're so angry, and they'd say, like, your child is so bossy, or the other B word, the bully, um, when really, no, 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 they're just, they're trying out these roles of, of organizer, of boss, boss babe, and <laughs> on their peers, and the only way they're going to learn is by the reaction of their peers, you know, it, it's, it's a hard thing, and um, and we struggle with that, and we will struggle with that. But for a long time, like, I, I would Google, like, are my kids bullies? You know, because I would, I mean, just these confrontations on the playground were so painful as a parent. I go home crying because, of course, you want everybody to love your kid. And I don't know. So then I learned, no, these my kids are not bullies. They are very strong-willed, bossy uh, leaders, leaders. They are leaders, not future leaders. They are current leaders. And um, we just have to kind of learn to channel that so that it appears positive to everybody, not just that they're railroading people with power. <laughs> yeah, there, there's so many layers to that, right? Like even the word bossy like has a lot of gender norms behind it around why is it so bad for a little girl to be bossy or to have that strong personality. Um, so I could talk about that for 10 to 15 minutes, right? but I won't. Um, I want to go back to the idea of, um, you know, what is it that these kids might be experiencing at home mm -hmm. that's leading them to act out in this way. And one of the things that I want folks to consider is, is I think a, a hot buzz term that we hear a lot about, um, at least in my line of work, is trauma-informed care or trauma-informed approaches. So recognizing that that when someone presents um, with an issue or with a challenge that we don't ask what's wrong with you, we ask what happened to you, recognizing that trauma can have long lasting impacts. And I think sometimes we need to recognize that we need to um, treat the bully with trauma informed practices just mm -hmm. as much because like I said, people aren't born bullies. Right. We don't wake up one morning, flip a switch and say, I'm just going to be a jerk today. Yeah. Um, that there's something that's been building, 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 and, and we could put it on the parents, but we could also put it on all kinds of other environmental factors mm -hmm. or societal factors um, that make them feel like it's okay to act that way and that maybe they feel like it's the only choice they have to act that way. Right, right. No, definitely not trying to place all the blame on – on everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree with that. So something interesting that I read that has affected our family, it says, um, just a stat that I found, if I can find it. This is from the National Education Association, and it says that every day as many as 160,000 children stay home because they feel unsafe at school, whether that's from bullying or other other things. It's not differentiated, but of course, that's what I would kind of go towards. And uh, we have a child in our family who tells me she's sick every single day, every single day. And, um, you know, we have every year hit our limit on mental health days that are allowed by the school. <laughs> <laughs> there are no mental health days allowed by the school. Um, so that's something that, you know, we have our finger on and we're watching. And when I read that stat that 160,000 children stay home every day because they feel unsafe, um, I don't know, like, how do we, how do we re react and respond to that? Yeah, I think we can even bring that closer to home. I mean, that that's an interesting statistic from, you know, thinking about a single day in the school year. Mm -hmm. I have a statistic that one in four high school students in Indiana said they do not feel safe at school mm -hmm. in 2018. And like you said, there's all kinds of reasons for that. I mean, we can look to the news and, and some of the situations that have been happening recently um, that don't have to do or may have to do with bullying. I mean, today, right. today, West Lane School, a unloaded gun found in a locker. I mean, that blew up in my text messaging today. I mean, 
I don't feel safe. When I walk into my kids' school, sometimes I'm just looking around like, all right. you know, Some, how, some you schools know? feel like jails. You know, right. you, you have to go through certain checkpoints. You There's a video camera yeah. that you have to stare Hit into the when buzzer. you push the buzzer. Yeah. yeah. I remember going back to my high school and being like, what ha- what has happened here that, that it's just in lockdown mode? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we always want our children to be in the – the safest environments possible and right now that's what schools feel like they need to do in order to to get there um but yeah one in four high the 25 percent of high school students in right. indiana right. who just feel like i don't i don't feel safe here and and certain groups of students feel less safe than other groups so right. black students feel less safe at school than white or hispanic students lgbtq students are over twice as likely to miss school because they feel unsafe um, and you know, some of the most common reasons for bullying that students point to are physical appearance, race and ethnicity, yep. um, gender, disability, religion, and sexual orientation. So when we think about, you know, some, some of our students who maybe fall into marginalized categories, um, they're feeling even more at risk mm-hmm. for bullying. Oh, it completely makes sense. And, and those are the kids that you see as a statistic sometimes when things go bad and and you look and you're like, oh, well, you know, they're not accepted. And I mean, it's easy for me to talk about this, but I I just, um, I don't know, like, what do we do? What do we do as, as parents of children in school? And then what do we do as a community? So do you have the answers for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting Kate on the spot. Like, come on, you're the answer lady, right? Yeah, lo- loaded question. <laughs> if I had the answer, I would hope that we would have fixed it by now. I think, I think the first thing is to recognize that it is preventable. Yeah. You know, I, I think we kind of in our society have this fatalistic tendency to think like, well, Kids are going to be kids, and no. I went through it. You know, I survived. Um, it's been happening but since forever. But should we just be surviving? Like, is that are we right. are we alive to survive in this in this century? Like, this we're not living in the wilderness. And like. I think we should <laughs> want more for our children mm-hmm. than surviving. So right. I think you know, step one is at acknowledging that it is preventable, mm-hmm. um, and then acknowledging that it's complex. It's a really heavy lift and no one person, no one sector of the community, no one community can do it alone. It has right. to be, you know, they, the phrase, it takes a village. It has to be a village effort to to um, be the best for our kids that we can be. Um, and so I, I think one thing that I'm always interested in, one thing I've been working on with with some of my partners this year has been the role that schools play. Um, there are a lot of challenges in our communities that I think we automatically go to the schools and say, well, because it's a natural touch point for families Mm -hmm. and and children, you know, we know our kids are in school, so we've got a, a, an audience, a a captive audience. So let's just do X, Y, Z. Um, but man, schools are strapped right now. They are at the brink and to keep putting more and more responsibility on them, I think what we need to start doing is asking ourselves, not only as individual parents, but as parent groups, mm-hmm. as, as a cohort of parents, as a community of parents, um, you know, I, y'all have a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You have, you have voting power. Mm-hmm. You have organizing power. You have... Um, you know, power in terms of the different resources you have through through your jobs and your social networks and your social capital. Like, if if all the parents of the world wanted to accomplish something, I have no doubt in my mind well, that it like would happen. Even like 10%. <laughs> it's like the, the 10% can actually right. <laughs> move the ticker on this, yeah. you know? And, and I tell you what, because I've had, I've had a couple of run-ins every so often on social media about different things with, with some of my friends who are, who are parents – and um, boy, there's there's nothing more fierce in this world than a mom. Yeah, tiger <laughs> <Tiger> mamas. <laughs> yeah, and 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 so just imagine if imagine if that parent who posted that kind of nasty thing mm-hmm. on the class site, imagine if that energy were directed towards something a little bit more proactive mm-hmm. and positive, mm-hmm. rather than just calling 
you yeah. know, you and your family out for something. Right, right. But like you said, it's complex. I don't know where she's coming from. Maybe her background is, you know, hard. I, I don't know. It, it was it was not positive. Yeah, I, I would be curious to ask the folks who are listening in, you know, where they think the responsibility lies mm -hmm. for preventing something like bullying. Yeah, I just felt like it was a very public um, humiliation yeah. of, of a child who actually didn't even have access to it. But then I remember I, I told my husband, I said, well, there go our birthday party invites. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's the be all end all, but that's how it felt like this is a parent group of 26 parents who, you know, my kids are going to go through school with their kids, you know, for the next And 10 it trickles years. down. Whatever's totally going on with the parents is going to trickle down in the kids. Oh, for sure. And then your child will treat my child differently. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like this whole thing. Uh, I wanted to go back to a comment that we had uh, here from Maddie. She says, hey, girls, I thought, beauties, I thought a lot about this, and I'm pretty sure I was a bully growing up. And it was a learned behavior at home that I had to develop skills to grow away from. I would love to hear more about that. Like, you know, that goes back to kind of what I was saying about feeling like this is something that starts at home. And I know we said it's complex. There's other factors. Um, but it just felt, you know, like, <sighs> all right. So I used to work at JCPenney mm -hmm. as a cashier. And I remember after the holidays, this uh, dad came in. I, I have, I am like squirrel, you know? Um, so this dad came in with his son and he said, my son bought this guitar from here with his money. And I don't want to pay this much because I found it cheaper somewhere else. And we were like, okay, we totally understand. I can't remember what the policy was and the exact details, but basically we're like, okay, well, uh, we need your receipt. We can refund your money. And he's like, no, I only want to pay $5 for it. And we were like, oh, you know, we're so sorry. We can't do that. We can refund your money and take the return. He's like, no. And then he got really loud and like everybody, you know, during the holiday, everybody's staring and I'm just standing there, you know, at the cash register like, oh gosh, here it comes, here it comes. And he was yelling and screaming and his son standing right there, you know, and all this is going on and I'm just looking. And then his son is like, yeah, when they walked away. And I just remember thinking like, oh, well, hey, dad probably learned it at home and look what son just witnessed. And so then that was kind of where this is before I had kids. I sort of went, wow, like what you demonstrate in front of your children is what they're going to do. I mean, it, it goes all the way down <laughs> for me. Like, you know, when you go somewhere and, you know, it's like, oh, kids under two don't pay admission. And then you have this two and a half year old. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, do you want your kids to see you lie? to save six bucks, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like that is like my biggest thing where I see that. And I'm like, w like how expensive a lesson is that? You know, like you think it saved you $6, but like, look at like what it did. And I kind of feel that way, like with the bullying, like this is a very expensive lesson. And, and I don't want my kids to ever see me mistreat someone because I wouldn't want them to mistreat someone. It's never okay for me to mistreat someone and then think that they're not going to pick up on that. I mean, they're always going to pick up. You guys have a very big responsibility. We have a very big responsibility. I do want to tell everybody real quick, we are live from Edge Media Studios in downtown Indy. This is Lights Out Live with Indy with Kids, sponsored by Hancock Gateway Health. So happy to have them as a sponsor this year. And also happy to have Kate from McCoy, which is the Marion County Commission on Youth. We are talking about bullying and our kids. I mean... You guys are awesome in the comments, telling us stories about your um, experiences. Again, if you don't feel comfortable sharing your experiences um, in the public message here, but you do want to share it with us, feel free to drop me a private message right now. I will not read your name. <laughs> I will share uh, with our audience without your name and just kind of talk about your situation. Uh, we are giving away uh, some tickets for all of you participating in the comments. We're going to pick... I have to go look how many. I think we're giving away like four family four packs to our Aladdin Cave of Wonders play day on Sunday at Climb Time Indy. We've got the Climb Time right here. Here's the cave. Uh, this is a indoor rock climbing facility. Um, we took our kids to the Aladdin Cave of Wonders event that we held a couple months ago when the movie was released in the theater, but now it's out on DVD, Blu-ray, or sorry, not DVD, Blu-ray and digital. <laughs> We're giving away um, some digital copies there. We've got swag for everybody, so make sure you come to that. Tickets are $10 per climber. 
Um, your kids will probably need a parent to help them belay. Uh, that's what my experience was last time. I thought I was going to climb, but <laughs> I was belaying <laughs> my kids. Um, and so we'd love to have you all out there on Sunday. And then four of you are going to have a family four pack for your family to uh, go check us out. So um, the best way to win is to leave some comments and we're going to randomly pick a bunch of you guys uh, to join us on Sunday. But again, you can come even if you don't win the tickets. Uh, you can come 10 bucks per climber and it'll be fun. So we have uh, Elizabeth here who has some advice on how to kind of help with the bullying situation. Uh, she says, be involved, talk to your kids, empower them, teach them ways to deal with issues that will build resilience have bus monitors, ask the bus drivers to check on the kids regularly, to have zero tolerance for bullying. Uh, I think it's interesting, Elizabeth has talked about the bus a few times, and um, those of you guys who know me or have been around for a while, uh, our, our situations and our family always come up on the school bus, always. And I remember talking to our school principal, <laughs> vice principal, a couple of months ago, and I just said, like, what is the deal with this bus, you know? like. It, are we the only people that are having problems on the bus? And he says, I just think that, you know, all day these kids sit, 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 sit in this classroom and they're trying so hard to keep it together and perform and do the right thing. And then they get on this bus and it's not unsupervised, but like, are we really asking this bus driver to navigate the roads of which we're not supposed to be texting and driving, mm -hmm. but this bus driver is supposed to keep track of 50 children while driving a bus <laughs> through the city? I mean, it is insane. Like, I, I can't imagine. Like, I drive a minivan with four children, and I cannot even like I just ignore it. I completely ignore it. I mean, my kids can be harassing each other in the backseat and I can't deal with it. I can't imagine being a bus driver with 50 children and that has to be going on. I mean. Yeah, the, the bus is definitely a treacherous place. Um, I know some of my own personal experiences mm -hmm. took place on the bus and I think you're right. And I think, I think that, you know, the principle that you referenced makes a really valid point. You know, we want our children to be safe and Safety number one in a moving vehicle is right. making sure that the person driving the vehicle is paying attention to the road, um, which makes the idea of bus monitors so valid. Now, I think, you know, I think the challenging question back is how are schools going to afford the bus monitors? Where is that mm -hmm. funding going to come from? Um, like I, like we've been talking about, it's a complex issue, but also like we've been talking about parents have a lot of power and, and you know, you have a lot of power in your community. And so when you... When you want something, I think y'all can make it happen. Yeah. And, you know, bus monitors are also an, an interesting um, thing to bring up because essentially what we're doing is we're creating an environment where bullying isn't even an option, mm -hmm. where that behavior isn't an option. Mm -hmm. It's it's not appropriate. You probably know you're not going to get away with it. And so that option is taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And I think the more times that we can create those environments where that negative action or that negative behavior is not even an option, either through changes to the physical environment, changes to the social norms, to the expectations that we have for how we behave with one another, we, we make it easier to make the right choice, the easy choice mm. every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's, and I was reading a little bit about bullying today and when you said saying that this behavior is not an option and it just recommend like telling your kids when, when they're acting out in your own family, their family is your like Petri dish for how to navigate life outside of your family. And then the school is the Petri dish for navigating how to, na you know, interact with people outside of the school and the world just saying to your kid when they're harassing a student or a child in your own family, like that is not an option in this family. That is not how we treat people. Um, and I don't know there, I feel like, and I know, like you mentioned, we put so much responsibility on our schools for economic, for feeding our kids, for providing psychological help, for their education, for everything. Um, but I do feel like when I was in school, <laughs> they focused a lot on some of these social programs, like, um, 
we had one that was called Say What's Wrong and Make It Right. And it went through all the like processes of working through conflict. And we went through that training every year. It was like a weekly um, thing that the PTO moms would come in and do a little like cheer, you know, and it was like, it just taught you. I don't know what the long standing effects were on that, but like, I know my kids know this song about peacemakers and they'll sing it to each other, you know, like, <laughs> like peacemakers talk about it. They don't fight about it. Uh, so, so they do that. But I just feel like maybe, maybe has that been taken away from the schools? Like, is that still happening? Yeah. I mean, I think we can look at what's been happening over the past 10 to 15 years or so. And we know that a lot more emphasis is being put on STEM, science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering, and math. We know that there's a lot of pressure for schools to perform on standardized testing. Although if anyone's seen the news lately, that's a little rocky right now. Right. Um, and I think that when we try to create more room for those priorities, something has to give, right? We're not making the school day any longer, although right. we have taken away recesses. We have taken away recesses. You know, we're taking away gym classes. But we're taking recess, away the art. Isn't that where you learn to yeah, interact so, with people so and we're like taking work away, those things out? What we're doing is we're taking away some of those other classes or times during the school day where that social emotional learning takes mm -hmm. place. And that kind of development in a child's life is so critical, you know, for how they're going to treat people and how they're going to behave for the rest of their lives. Right. And right. so I think, um, yeah, it, we're, we're putting a lot on schools, but are we putting the right pressures on schools? And, you know, when, when we add too much of one thing, what are we taking away? Right. Well, and really, like, I mean, this is like a whole nother thing, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, there's so much emphasis on this memorization, but like you can Google anything. I mean, you can Google any answer in the entire world, but we're lacking in those interpersonal communication skills. We're lacking in conflict resolution. Like we are lacking in those things where, I mean... And it's not starting now. Like, it's not this generation. It's not our generation. I see lots of older adults mm -hmm. on the Internet saying some pretty horrific, unnecessary things. And it's just been a longstanding problem. But, like, where did our compassion and our care go? I mean, is it is it any different than it was, you know, 40 years ago? Or is there just a bigger spotlight on the way people are, like, now people have a voice who didn't really have a voice before, maybe? Like, what is it? I mean, I'm just, I don't know. I'm going to treat that as a rhetorical yes, question because like, I don't know. Give me the know. answer, Kate. Like, I told you guys, she's the answer lady. <laughs> I don't know. So. But, but I do think, you know, our anymore with technology, we are more hyper aware of these things. It's mm -hmm. much more in our face. We have so much information at our fingertips and that not only applies to Google, mm -hmm. but it applies to how much news we see, so where that news. news is coming from. Like we're, we can find out what's going on across the world in a millisecond. Um, when, you know, before you, I don't, I don't even really know what happened before. Right. <laughs> I know. We, we weren't here, right? Like, not our job. <laughs> we had to go to the library and look it up in an encyclopedia. Yeah. Like the Dewey Decimal exactly. System or the, something. The, what is that? Microfish? Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever use that? Like, I'm trying to figure out how old you are compared to me. I learned about it. You learned about it. Okay. I used it a little bit. Like, okay. I don't know why. Like, they, it's not like we needed it. It's like they wanted us to make sure we knew how to, like, card catalog yeah oh, yeah, yeah like that? the Dewey no, Decimal no, System no but I'm not talking about the card catalog I'm talking about that thing where you could look at old you magazine like put articles a yeah like and you like and you yeah spun it and so you'd find old magazine articles like now you just google like and they're putting all those things on the internet for you but it was like they wanted to make sure we knew how to use I, oh my gosh it was horrible That's although like cursive. I did like, I did they read, taught us cursive you know, so I that we know how to use it I did read some really cool stuff on microfish like I never found what I, I was ever looking for cuz like I didn't really I didn't really learn how to use it but I would run across the weirdest stories so that was like 
that was like surfing the web before yeah. <laughs> the web. Like, oh my gosh, we need to go find one of those and like show people what it was like. I'm sure there's one at the I'm, public library. We could probably find a video on YouTube on like, this is what it was like. That's going to be the next Facebook Live yes. on location. At yes. the oh, look, here it is. Library. This is it. This is the machine. We got it up on the screen right now for you. So this is how you would go look up information and articles. Like tonight, I just like typed in like, what is bullying and came up with some stats that we've been talking about. And like I would have had to go like look for the real and like oh, horrible, horrible. <laughs> All right, if you guys are just tuning in, we're going to be giving away some awesome passes to Climb Time Indy for our Aladdin Cave of Wonders event this Sunday. Uh, those are coming up in the next 10 minutes. But we are live from Edge Media Studios in downtown Indy. Thank you so much to Hancock Gateway Health for sponsoring tonight's show, to Edge Media for hosting us, and to Kate from McCoy, the Marion County Commission on Youth, for being with us tonight as we unpack this whole bullying situation. You guys, there are lots of good comments here. You guys, this you guys are on fire with us tonight. Like it's a very deep, emotional um it's just something that we it, it, everyone is affected by it in some way or knows someone who's affected. I mean, you said one in 25 kids don't feel safe at school, whether that's for bullying or other reasons. One in four. Sorry, that's why yeah. I was thinking 25 percent. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, and then I read that this year, this is from the National Association of Elementary School Principals. They say this year an estimated 18 million children will be affected by bullying. And every seven minutes, a child is bullied on a school playground. It's just like heartbreaking because you think about like, does that mean that if my child is not a bully, that they are being bullied? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and I don't even know, like, just to be real here, like, would you rather your child be the bully or be bullied? <laughs> I don't want either. But like, I mean, that's, again, hypothetical question. You guys don't have to answer that. But think about it for a minute. Like, one is damaging and one is your you're damaged like I would say they're both damaged. they're both horrible like I, I just don't know like if you had to choose <laughs> hypothetical you don't have to choose guys um yes our, a comment that we had earlier someone said hurt people hurt and so yeah like like Kate had mentioned like it's just super complex why people do it how to fix it like we are not going to come up with the answers tonight but you mentioned like we have a lot of political uh push we have a lot of um, social push, like things that as a community we can do. And you mentioned the village, you know. Um, but let's see what we've got some of the, uh, let's see, my boys are bullied in school. They didn't tell me because they were ashamed. Mm. Yeah. That's the other thing is that you don't want to come home and like tell your parents for a couple of things. One, you don't want your parents to look at you differently. And the other, you don't know what they're going to do. Like as a parent, are you going to fly off the handle? in a public forum and create more <laughs> enemies for your child, make it harder for your child. Um, because sometimes that's what happens is when that bully loses some power for some reason, whether it's through punishment or, or something, um, they come back harder. And, oh, my gosh, it's just, um, I don't know. Well, and especially for, for boys and young men, you know, we kind of have this narrative about, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, rub some dirt in it, you know, be a man, when in reality they can be bullied too and it can mm -hmm. be really damaging and really hurtful. And so I think, you know, for that particular person, when they find out, going back to that idea of validating their emotions, mm -hmm. believing them, and not necessarily dictating how they should feel about the situation, mm -hmm. You, you feel hurt, you feel sad, um, you know, you feel embarrassed. That's all okay. Mm -hmm. It is okay to feel, it's completely natural to feel those things. Um, and it's okay for you as a boy to feel those right. things because you're a human being, right. not a robot. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, being really mindful, especially of, of the messages that we give our boys if they're being bullied, um, because again, I think there's this common narrative about, you know, that they should be tough and they can't let people know when it hurts. And, and there's that shame that gets wrapped around it. Yep. Yep. It's, there is a lot of shame. It is too hard. We've got a lot of, um, not, I mean, we have some of our, our viewers here saying that they were bullied, um, or that their children were bullied. 
some to the point where they wanted to take their own lives. Mm -hmm. And again, we mentioned that today is National Suicide Prevention Day. Uh, so just a timely topic. We didn't pick this topic on this day because of this. It just um, kind of fits sometimes here. Um, I mean, there's just it's so deep like we could have 20 shows like this and we're never gonna find the exact answer between the two of us but if we can help you guys come up with ways to talk to your kids and sometimes it's a matter of just surviving it I mean that sounds so like hopeless but like you said talking to your kids about their feelings giving them an outlet a safe space to work through it try to come up with some solutions um, I think uh, Sanders I think it was Sandra said this that um, a lot of times, I can't find where it was. Oh, Becky said, in addition, often the first punishment is to further remove the social aspects, mm. um, loss of recess, time out of class, et cetera. So yeah, so then, then they're still never going to learn how to work, work through these things because you're just removing them from the situation. Like, and that's what they're trying to do is tr they're trying to avoid working through that conflict, trying to avoid those social interactions that make them feel uncomfortable that they're unable to process by just like putting the power and taking the power away from the other person. But when you remove them from that, then you're also just, here's another situation where you don't have to work through this. Right. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It is so hard being a parent. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have my own experiences, like seventh grade, was a very terrible year for me. For middle school usually middle is. Middle school is horrible. <laughs> I loved eighth grade. I will say that. Eighth grade was the best. Ninth grade also not mm -hmm. so great. But seventh grade, I remember, like I cried every day. Um, some of you guys, I might have told this story before. I had a teacher in seventh grade who would make me cry. I would cry a lot in class. So every time I would cry, she'd make me go and cry into a baby food jar. So I could collect my tears and she could show me how ridiculous I was for crying so much all the time. Uh, I know <laughs> there's like obviously way larger problems with that. <laughs> but at the time, like that was my punishment for being emotional about the way I was being treated mm -hmm. by specific students in our class. And I remember like this kid was definitely a bully. I'm not just using that word. He was definitely a bully. But I remember in high school, I ran into him. We did not go to the same high school, thank God. And we were walking down the street, just how you always imagine it. And at the stoplight, and he says, Katie? And I looked at him, and I thought, oh, gosh. And he never had touched me. It was all mental torment. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember looking at him going, oh, this guy. But I actually had evolved as a person. I was much stronger at that point emotionally to where I don't think that there was anything that he could have said that would have done anything to mm -hmm. me. But he said, hey, um, good to see you. And that was it. We walked across the street. We got to the other end. He was like kind of behind me because I was walking a little bit fast. And he says, hey, can I say something? And I said, yeah. He goes, I was really mean to you in seventh grade. And I was like, yeah, you really, really were. And he goes, I really liked you in second or seventh grade. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed at him and never saw him again. I don't even think we're Facebook friends. But I probably would be Facebook friends with him, which he tormented me made it to where I was humiliated by the teacher by crying into this glass. And I remember talking to my dad about it at some point. The glass thing ended when my mom learned about it. But it mm. took a while till I went home and told my parents because, like Sandra said, I was embarrassed to tell my parents that because I felt I was getting in trouble. Right. And I didn't know why I was getting it. Like, there's something wrong with me being sad about the way I'm being treated. But um, I remember that I would tell my dad about this kid, Sean. And my dad was like... You know what you need to do is you need to like the next time he's bothering you, you take your books and you slam them down on the desk really hard. And we sat at tables at the time. It was a big emphasis on group learning. You know, I'm a number seven. He was a number three. Um, he says, you slam your books down on the table and you yell like weekend words, like bad words, um, you know, stop it. And I was like, dad, I would get in so much trouble. And part of it was my parents didn't realize that I was the one getting in trouble. Mm -hmm for being upset. And then if I had just done that, like it was miserable. But yeah, I don't know why I went there, but uh, it, it was miserable. And I, I will never forget the way I felt. And so when I see my kids getting emotional, I, I like, I want to just like make it stop mm -hmm. 
and then also reassure them like you're not in trouble for feeling this way like please stop crying like like some you know sometimes they're a little but here it's okay to be this upset and to be this sad because it is a hard thing well and i think you know looking back at at the ways i was bullied in elementary school um it was looking back at it now it was really a minor thing it was mm. just name calling and it was a stupid silly fourth grade name you know it wasn't right. even a weekend word type right. name it was just a completely <laughs> made up name but it was relentless and it was tormenting and in fourth grade it just felt like i don't want to go up against this every day no. and i think what we need to recognize is that it, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be this weird fourth grade name that some nine-year-old boy mm -hmm. came up with at lunch one day, but it's happening every day. And the feeling that that child is feeling being called that name is just as valid as if we were called a weekend word name. Right, right, yeah. Or if we were, you know, being harassed or bothered at work day in and day out. And so Which does happen to adults. This is oh, absolutely. Bullying epidemic. is not is not limited to just children. It it I mean it happens in parent groups, it happens in workplace settings. Um it, it can happen at any age and on any platform at any time. And so I, I think that, you know, yeah, just, just thinking about how do we make sure that we validate mm -hmm. the feelings that that the the person who's being bullied might be feeling um, and also at the same time recognize that the bully is probably acting out of a place of hurt as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, you guys, this is all we really have time for tonight. Um, wanted to remind you about our Cave of Wonders Aladdin event on Sunday at Climb Time Indy from 12 to 3 p.m. Uh, $10 per person for the climber. Parents, you can come and climb or you can belay, which does not cost you any money to belay. We'll be giving away digital codes for the new Aladdin um, both videos, the uh, the one re-released from the vault, as well as the live action one, um, and some other swag for you. So come check it out. I've been told that if you can walk or you're old enough to walk, then you can climb. And we tested that with our kids, and I would say that is totally true. However, our um, our children who are about four, five, six years old actually got the most out of the. Um, experience. So we do have four, uh, let's see, is it four? Three family four packs to give away tonight to our guests and the commoners. Um, this is the four pack has to be used on Sunday only during this event. It's not transferable to another time. Um, so if you are unable to go when I call your name, then just let me know as soon as possible. We'll try to pick somebody else later. Uh, we do have some runner ups here and you have to be present right now to win those. So uh, make sure you comment letting us know that you won and uh, then send us a private message so we can get you the information for that. So. If you have a friend, a parent, um, anyone who could use this information shared in the video today for uh, bullying, if, if they have a child going through it, um, anything like that, please share this video. We'd love to um, just get this message out in some way. And I know we'll probably be having you back for some other topics, some riveting topics that are uh, highly emotionally charged. Uh, <laughs> I like non-emotionally charged non -emotionally. topics too. All right, well, we could talk about shopping and coffee at some point too, um, which can't be emotional. Uh, <laughs> so, but thank you guys, especially for joining us tonight. Without you, there is no show. Um, and we're so happy and thank you to Gateway Hancock Health for presenting tonight's and for Edge Media Studios for hosting us. All right. Our first uh, family four pack goes to Mr. and Mrs. Clark. If you are available on Sunday and you're present right now, let us know. We would love to host you for the Aladdin, Aladdin Cave of Wonders. I know it's a little bit of a drive for you, uh, but we'd love to have you. Um, Elizabeth Valencia, we also have a family four pack for you and your family to come enjoy the play date. And Sandra Tilford would love to have you join us as well. So please, please, please come join us, everybody. We'd love to have you. And if you're interested in a pre-sale pass, I'm like selling all the goods here today. Uh, if you are interested in a pre-sale pass for the Indie Kids Consignment Sale, that means you get to shop tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Um, you get to shop 
early, 3.30 to 7, and get a $5 shopping credit. Then uh, drop your drop me your email and a message, and I will send you a link to grab that ticket. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you to everybody, and we'll see you next Tuesday on Lights Out Live.